Hey folks, Paul here. I've been wanting to do a feature length video or, or videos on lure presentation. Uh, presentation being such a, a key and, and fun part of, of our fishing. But before I can address presentation, I first need to cover something more fundamental to the subject. To introduce this fundamental part of all angling puzzles, I'll use and, and flesh out the old proverb. Teach someone to catch a fish and they'll be fed for a day. Teach them to fish and they'll be fed for a lifetime. To teach someone to catch a fish, we would tell them the what, where, when, and how. Uh, go to this spot at this time with this lure and retrieve in this way and you'll likely catch some fish. But such advice is of course fleeting. That's the point of the proverb. The what, where, when, and how formula is going to fail and probably sooner rather than later. And that's because things change out there. The questions to ask then are, what exactly is changing and how are the fish responding? The whys that underlie all those W's. <laughs> Essentially, what's missing is the lakes and the fish side of the story. As a young angler, I always found it frustrating when reading fishing articles or watching videos, having the author or presenter suddenly trail off with depending on conditions. After reading or hearing that phrase, for the umpteenth time, my response started to get downright heated. What conditions? Don't stop now, that's the important stuff. <laughs> to be fair, this is also where things get complicated. There are a lot of variables at play out there. Uh, but once again, that's the important stuff. It eventually became apparent to me that I needed to figure out that important stuff for myself. What I needed to know was how fish and aquatic systems function. And then how the two come together to influence each and every one of our fishing days. So before we talk about the what's and how's of presentation, I want to address the why's, the environmental conditions and circumstances that are at play and pretty much run the show out there. Being able to read those conditions and circumstances provides us with the best shot at meeting the fish in front of us where they're at. Okay, first some definitions. Conditions are the immediate state of the water that the fish are experiencing. Uh, things such as uh, the temperature, water clarity, oxygen levels, uh, and, and water movement such as current or wave action. Circumstances I see as environmental events that influence those water conditions, uh, the fish directly or that affect our angling efforts. These could include weather events, prey types, uh, prey availability or vulnerability, predation risk, competition amongst fish, uh, angling pressure, boat traffic, uh, materials in or near the water that affect our fishing such as cover types or hang trees and brush, and on and on and on. Okay, There are a lot of circumstances that, are, that could affect the fish and our fishing, positive or negative. The sum of conditions and circumstances is what determines my fishing strategy. Okay, so there's a lot of them. Which ones are the most important in the moment? Well, there are some primary factors that the fish must weigh when they're deciding when, where, what, and how to take action. But the fundamental why that underlies their decisions, those decisions to take action, revolves around basic economics, or in physiology terms, uh, what's called energetics. And there is a basic energetic equation. How much energy will be burned against the benefit gained for an action? So our basic questions now become, how much energy do the fish currently have available? That is, how are they feeling? <laughs> uh, or, or what's their mood? And do they anticipate a good chance for a payoff for their efforts? This basic energetic equation underlies a fish's decision to feed or lay low. 
getting fed is more economic negotiation than it is sheer athleticism. The consequences of failure are severe. Under survival pressures, environmental cues, those conditions and circumstances are directly tied to the desire, the drive to take action. No, we can't always see, recognize, or prioritize those conditions and circumstances accurately. But know that if your fish are not biting, there are reasons for this. And we may be able to do something about that. Many of the keys lie in recognizing and understanding those conditions and circumstances and how the fish might be responding to them. One good question that we can ask is, when are bass most likely to get fed? First off, know that fish can anticipate the future. <laughs> know where to be and when. Aquariums and marinas where fish are regularly fed show us that fish know where to be and when, and that they can be triggered by a number of cues. Uh, specific locations, specific times of day, presence of people throwing food, uh, the action sounds of food being thrown, and the actions of other fish, uh, excited fish nearby. In the wild, without people throwing food, cues can be a, a change in lighting, as in dawn, dusk, cloud cover, changes in water clarity or surface conditions, uh, the presence of current, uh, fish gaining advantageous positioning on prey, the presence of other fish feeding, uh, or, or the, the presence of other animate objects that affect feeding opportunities. Um, examples I've seen of animate objects are the presence of other large fish like carp, catfish feeding, um, the, the presence of cattle in the water, uh, people, boats, anchors dragging, <laughs> uh, heavy equipment on the shore, uh, rocks and sticks falling in, you name it. Know that fish are highly tuned to the conditions and circumstances around them, especially those that might spell food. On the flip side, there are cues that can put fish off that essentially make hunting and or, or chasing too costly. These can be changes in uh, temperature, uh, lighting, uh, as in extremely high or extremely poor visibility conditions, uh, the absence of current, and of course the presence of danger or perceived danger. Now, I need to interject something here. While we certainly want to be on the water at the right place and time, we can't always control that. And heavily feeding fish, uh, the ones that are apt to be suicidal, are an exception. But fish are often still catchable even when they're not on fire, when conditions and circumstances aren't ideal. Fish are opportunistic. And if we anglers can read the conditions, even poor ones, we can often adjust our tactics to meet them. The challenge is one of observation skills and versatility in presentation skills. To sum up, most basically, conditions inform fish of whether they should prioritize feeding, predator avoidance, or energy conservation. If feeding gets the green light, more nuanced conditions and circumstances then inform those fish of their likelihood of getting fed, the what, where, when, and how that leads to success, what I call context. Uh, context, uh, the big C, okay, completes the behavior equation from the fish's perspective. Conditions and circumstances equals context. Context is a, a bigger subject uh, to be fleshed out in future videos, um, in particular, uh, in our behavior documentaries, uh, the next one in the series to be called Making a Living. For now, know that context refers to what fish have or put into their memory banks. All the conditions and circumstances after they've gone through the fish filter, from which fish make their decisions to take action. Uh, the meaning of fish derives from all those conditions and circumstances. Context comes up in our video fishing journals as well, of course, uh, because it's what I'm trying to piece together and take advantage of as I fish. Uh, a particularly good demonstration of this appears in Video Fishing Journal 24, uh, The Crayfish Hunters, uh, so you might want to check that one out. Now let's home in on some specific conditions and circumstances and see what they can mean to the bass in front of us. We can't cover them all or all the details here in a couple videos. Uh, once again, that's what a channel's for. <laughs> but 
we'll hit the major ones and look at how they're apt to factor into our fishing. Uh, I'll introduce them here and then go after them in some depth over the next, um, it's looking like three videos. Many things affect how fish behave and how well they bite. But some conditions and circumstances that fish experience weigh in more heavily than others. I'll say here at the outset that the primary conditions that affect fish and fishing are temperature and lighting. Temperature, what biologists call the master factor, underlies a fish's basic physiology and therefore their performance capabilities. Lighting, determined by sky and water conditions, affects visibility and therefore the vulnerability of essentially everyone in the food chain, uh, prey and predators alike. We'll also address water current uh, because of its powerful physical effects on fish feeding behavior. Uh, and we'll touch on oxygen levels, although uh, serious oxygen deficits are not all that common on uh, healthy bass waters. Okay, over the next few videos, we're going to dig right into conditions and circumstances. That way, as I make other videos, and I end up saying the inevitable depends on conditions, <laughs> I won't feel like I'm leaving you high and dry. I can refer you to these videos for the necessary background. Uh, the first, Video Fishing Journal 31, hits temperature. Uh, journal 32 will hit lighting, and uh, Journal 33 will hit current and oxygen. So, um, uh, and hopefully you won't have to wait uh, too darn long to see these, um, although ice out is, is imminent. It's happening this week here, so I've got my work cut out for me to get these out. Uh, wish me Godspeed. <laughs>